you there with a recap of what happened on Friday. Well, let's push ahead to this week. Todd Horowitz is chief strategist at BubbaTrading.com. He joins us live from Chicago. Uh, Todd, great to see you again. Happy uh, Sunday afternoon to you. So with um, some of this more hawkish uh, Fed talk, it seems like the Fed is trying to dip their toe in the water to gauge market reaction or perhaps to prep the market for possibly a rate hike sooner than we expected. Do you think they could actually go in September? Good morning, Pauline. And I do not think they will go in September. They could, they should, but they won't. I think they're too busy with their economic theory. And this is more, as I think you just pointed out, a test balloon to kind of get market reaction. Now, my biggest problem is that the market reaction should not be dependent on whether or not the Fed raises rates. If they believe the economy is strong enough to see higher rates, then they should just raise them. The only way we're going to get the middle class to get back into participation and bring back entrepreneurs into, this, into the world is by raising rates so that banks will actually lend money instead of hoarding the money. Okay, so talk to us about the, the strength of the U.S. consumer because we're getting retail sales out uh, later on this week. We know the Fed is going to be looking at that. The jobs number recently that came out were way below expectation, but when you look at the 12-month average, it's still averaging over 200,000 jobs added a month, so you could look at the glass half full in that respect. Uh, in terms of the American consumer, in your portfolio, do you hold any exposure to stocks that, that relate to the strength or what you think is the strength of the consumer well you know I, I do own some you know consumer discretionary stocks but I think that the actually the, the American consumer is in a lot of trouble I, I think that we've seen this from retail sales for the last five years I think what you've seen is a, a maybe if you want to celebrate 200,000 jobs let's really look deeper into the picture we're not making more money than we made five years ago we're making less money we are not having the, the inflation based on what the Fed says. However, I'm paying more for food and energy, so I'm making less, paying more. That's not good. We're not getting good jobs. The jobs we've lost over that same period of time, I would venture to say, make more money than the new jobs that have been mostly in the service sector that have been created. We've, we're, we're building far too much debt for the middle class consumer if they can get the money, but they're not making enough to live their everyday life and pay their normal bills. So I think. The retail is going to be, a, once again, another problem, which is really allowing the Walmarts and the Amazons to, to succeed at great levels because they're forcing all the little guys out of business, which proves more to my point that the American consumer and the small entrepreneurs are in a lot of trouble here. So if you're pessimistic about the retail space and a consumer stocks, where are you putting your money? Well, I think the place to put your money now is in the, the commodity sector. I think, you know, from a, from a, a, a trader standpoint, I mean, I'm looking to, to buy, you know, actual raw commodities, grains, and, and, and I'll be looking for oil when it gets down to 40, which I think it will. But, I mean, for a consumer who doesn't trade in the commodity space, I think like an ETF, like a JJG, which represents that space at $28 seems to be a great play. I think you want to look to the stocks that are, that are, that are strong companies, that pay good dividends, that'll hold up under real heavy scrutiny. And I think like a Halliburton is a, is a play you could make down here. It's just under 42 if it gets to 40. I think we've got some, some more turbulence coming here, but the markets did close on support on Friday. And I'd like to see the action you know, Monday morning going forward. But overall, I think we're going to head lower with or without the Fed, I think the Fed has really worn its course out throughout the entire system. And I think you're going to look to see the sellers are going to come in. And if interest rates do rise, it'll intensify the selling because there's a lot of people in the market that don't want to be there. Okay, but uh, Monday morning, I know you're going to be watching uh, very closely what happens. If the sell-off continues, you are going to pick up, some, pick up some more of those distressed assets that you just listed. If it starts Absolutely. to rally, uh, what will you be doing? You're 100% right. If we sell off hard in the morning, now we just opened the futures market here uh, and uh, the markets are pretty flat. If we come in in the morning, you know, New York time, 9.30 or 8.30 Chicago time, and we're selling off hard, I will definitely be looking to be a buyer because I think that will be an opportunity to buy at least for a quick trade. And I will look at these, uh, these stocks that will be beaten down, you know, the Halliburtons of the world, anything that's been a real company that I has, that has real earnings, I think that will survive will be stuff that I'll be looking to buy. However, if we open 
on a big gap to the upside and they start and the buyers run in early, to me that would be another selling opportunity and we will look to go much lower. We're at a very tricky point here from a technical standpoint from the close on support on Friday back to resistance at about 2160, 2175 in the S&P. Now I do believe we're going lower sooner than later, but we could see a rally. Remember, we were 40 days without a move over 1.5% in either direction until Friday. All right. Thank you for uh, playing out those different scenarios for us. Todd Horowitz from BubbaTrading.com joining us from Chicago. Great seeing you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Pauline.